It's really great to see so many people here tonight. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we all know, I think, that Brevard County has a plumbing problem. It's a pretty big plumbing problem. Um, and today, approximately 589,000 people live in Brevard County. We are anticipated to grow to at least 650,000 plus by the year 2030. In 1950, 23,000 people lived here. In 1970, 230,000 people lived here. In 2014, it was 544,000 people. That's all from the University of Florida, by the way. That's a lot of people mowing their lawns, fertilizing their lawns, building homes near the lagoon, walking their dogs, and flushing their toilets. And all that growth increases the many ways and the amounts of pollutants that enter the lagoon. This is just meant to show what my friend Keith Winston often says to us, is it's not an either or problem that we have, it's an and problem. It's septics, and it's fertilizer, and it's stormwater runoff, and it's sewage treatment plants that need to be repaired. And we have to look at all of those things together. You can't just find one silver bullet that's going to solve it all, which is why there's so many people here talking about so many different things. This is from the 1980s and the 1990s. And it's about nitrogen loading. Nitrogen and phosphorus are the evil things in our lagoon. Over here in the yellow is sewage, 1980s and 1990s. Then you have groundwater, then you have septics, then we have atmospheric, then we have stormwater runoff, thank you very much, and then we have muck. So I want to show you what happened by, look at that chart from the 80s, then the Clean Water Act came in in the 1990s, and now look how it changes. So when you look at the mix now, it's dramatically different in terms of Sewage is down, septics are up, muck is up, and the other, the other three are down as well. So I think this is a pretty amazing slide to look at the difference that we're dealing with in 30 to 40 years. But there's one thing that's missing from all of this and from most of what you're gonna hear tonight, and it's you. One of the things we all have to do when we're talking about sources of pollution is look in the mirror. And that's the reason we have all these organizations out in the lobby, to give you information. Because if everybody here did the right thing about fertilizer, did the right thing about their grass clippings, cleaned up after their dog, which I did today when I walked my son's dog, um, washed their car at the car wash, and talked to their neighbors about these issues and shared some of this information, it can really have a big impact. So don't forget that you are part of the problem, but even more importantly, you're part of the solution. And we all need to really band together. And not only do we have to deal with the legacy of pollution that we've been putting into the lagoon for 50 years, but what we're putting in now, and remember that population chart? So we also have to think about tomorrow. So we have to plan more than just what do we do now, but how do we plan to deal with all those new houses and new lawns and new dogs and new toilets that are gonna be coming into our community. So it's, it's really an ongoing big challenge for all of us. Uh, the good news is that the people of Brevard really respect and love their waterways. And for most of us, that's why we live here is that some of you grew up here fishing and swimming in the lagoon, you moved away, now you came back, you want your children here, and so we have a lot of passion here. We also have a great plan that was put in place in 2016 that's based on science and the experiences of other water bodies like Chesapeake Bay and Tampa Bay. They're not exactly the same, but we're now seeing after 30 years Chesapeake Bay is really returning to, to health in a good way. So you've got to stay the course. It's going to take a long time to get there. The plan has really only been active for a couple of years, and it's hard to be patient, but we're starting to see some early signs of success, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. So everybody, you know, hold hands and say, you know, we're going to be patient, 
We're going to support this. It doesn't mean it's not going to change as we go along, and we're going to adjust to adapt to new technologies. But we have to have hope and keep going forward. So now I have a really brief video that I want to show you before our next speaker. This is my backyard. This is the uh, O'Galley River and the O'Galley Harbor back here. And it's the site of the uh, city of Melbourne's muck dredging project, a huge project. They're removing 625,000 cubic yards of muck from this area, a pretty small body of water. But, and to give you a visual, that's about the size of a football field, 400 feet high, that much muck. So they're about two thirds of the way through now and we're seeing some really uh, great progress. Uh, whereas a couple of years ago, I'd never see much life back here. Every now and then a dolphin, some fish, but not much. But now we're seeing pods of dolphins come through, tearing up the fish, uh, manatees all over, snook. I can't catch them, but there's a lot of snook here. Mullet, tarpon uh, in the spring. In a couple of months, in April, we'll have a bunch of uh, juvenile bull sharks that we did last year. So it's really exciting to see the project, and I'm really excited to see the project all up and down the county as uh, Brevard's plan continues.